right there if possible. The corn, yeah. We are here with Sabido and who better than Sabido to be sticking Belize. the Belize flag onto our boat. Thank you so much. And it's perfectly aligned too. Yeah, that's skill. <laughs> Thank you, high five. <laughs> Hey, this is Next Meridian. We are Nick and Mathilde and we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender Albatros. Three years, seven continents, 88 countries and just the road as a home. About to cross to the border. We got all the paperwork, all the steps are done. Now we're next after this car. Hopefully, uh, we're done. It took us in total two hours and 15 minutes. And we are in a new country! Yes! As we entered Belize, we wondered, how special can it be? It is a small territory, right in between giant Mexico and Guatemala. Guatemala, which even claims sovereignty over all or parts of Belize. So really, one could expect Belize as just another country in Central America. Wrong. Belize felt very different to its neighbors. But how did Belize become a cultural exception in the continent? A lot of it has to do with its British heritage, from the colonization, while most of the region was linked to Spain. But more interesting even, did you know Belize only became independent in 1981? 1981! Can we realize how recent that is? So you guessed it, this week we discover Belize. A country that felt like a Caribbean island in Central America. We are now officially in Belize, which is our one, two, three, fourth country in the Americas. And uh, it's really nice, like as soon as you cross, the first thing that like is obviously a, a change from Mexico is that it's an English speaking country. Um, so we got used to like speaking English again, but with a very different accent from like the US or Canada. So that was really nice. And then we started driving through the fields to head south and just seeing the first few houses, it's like the, just the construction of the houses looks a bit different. Uh, we're going to check further south in the country if it's the same, but like here, it just doesn't look just like Mexico. First thing we're noticing is yeah, all the, all the signs are in English. Secondly, the speed, I think it's in miles. I didn't really understand, but I have to check because it didn't say anything. It just put a number, but 55, such a specific number for kilometers per hour. So I'm guessing it's miles. And then just, yeah, the infrastructure, the way the road is built, the way the signs are, the way the electrical poles are, the way the buildings look. Uh, just, you feel like the atmosphere isn't the same. Like the infrastructure and the landscape looks different, even though we're, you know, just crossed the border a few minutes ago. It's very interesting, I like it, can't wait to see more of it. We always start planning our itinerary through a new country as we cross a border. Belize was no exception. That day, it was over lunch with Austrian friends we randomly met at the border. We just arrived, one hour ago. So, we... so far, so good. And the food? Amazing. Yeah, okay, good. We are here at Mercy's place. Uh, it was recommended to us by somebody from uh, Instagram called Chris, who is from Belize but actually lives elsewhere. And um, it's really good. This is like a rice milk drink called uh, porchata. And we had burritos and tacos. Super good, amazing. And last minute planning sometimes leads to pretty spontaneous decisions. Like the one that came that day. We crossed the border this morning and we didn't know this morning we were going to be here in Belize City without Albo rushing to catch the last boat to the islands. But somehow we figured out it was the best moment. We kind of organized everything in the last hour on the road and here we are rushing to get our boat. Last boat. Thank you. Thank you. 
So why leaving our Land Rover behind? Because where we go, cars are not allowed. One cannot really go to Belize without taking the time to branch off and visit the second biggest barrier reef in the world. 900 kilometers of unique ecosystems, just 40 kilometers off the coast of the country. Everything went so fast today, uh, but now we're on Cake Halker. We're going to do the snorkeling tour so that we get to try that and at least we can confirm or not one of the cliche on Belize, which is an awesome place for diving. Some food for such. Well, uh, we wanted something really local, and um, so we got this fried rack that everyone told us to get. There's chicken inside, and I think beans and cheese, and then less local. Less less local. Um, <laughs> Our spontaneous adventure brought us to Calle Colker, from which we were able to go to the reef. The only issue for us is the price of the accommodations on the island. But we did figure that out. So how did we end up sleeping two in a single bed last night? Is because all of the cheap room of the island were already booked and because we decided to come only uh, yesterday, kind of last minute, I was like calling and calling and calling and everyone was like, we're fully booked, for, forget about it. Everything else was above budget. And then this girl said, I had one consolation, but it's only one bed. And then I wrote her, can we sleep at two? And she was like, yeah, okay. So eventually we got the cheapest deal for two people in the island. We were like two for $15, which is really good. Where you don't have money, you have ideas. Ready for some underwater magic? Because this is the shallowest part of the reef, and it's also the strongest point of Belize. Sharks, turtles, stingrays is the head full of incredible memories and sunburn that we return to mainland. And we were barely back on mainland that already Caribbean hospitality struck again. Twice in the same night. First, as we just arrived at a car. We park here and this is what we find in the morning, in the evening. Really loud with all these birds. But this is hilarious. Go in the Land Rover Club and they left us two stickers. And second, the same evening as we looked for a place to sleep. And good morning. This is where we slept last night. So, this is the house of Sabido. This is his little company. It's a water purification store. We filled up our water tank yesterday. And uh, it was around 10 p.m. and he says, ah, oh, you shouldn't drive at night. 
and uh, if you want you can park in front of my house sleep here no problem so we ended up doing that it was perfect because we did have about 45 minutes to drive till the spot we had found but uh, and, and it would have been fine but we thought you know when somebody gives you a kind gesture and says hey why don't you sleep over or hey want to come over for dinner or hey what are, why don't you come over for something we usually tend to say yes because it's always an experience and it's always nice to say yes to people for example like these are the countries we've been crossing okay. and we just came from mexico now okay. and then belize and then guatemala and keep going okay. and so for all these countries what we usually do is we always ask like a local person to stick it because then we have a better memory of like oh netherlands we met this dutch guy and here in mexico it was the guy in tijuana who did it for us Okay. So in Belize, we'll be like, oh, I remember Sadido from Belize City. <laughs> so, if you'd like to do the honors, no the hardest task you will have is to try to align them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and you can start in this, uh, this one. Right there, if possible. The corner. Mm -hmm. We are here with Sadido, and who better than Sadido to be sticking Belize. the Belize flag onto our boat? Thank you so much. And it's perfectly aligned too. Yeah, that's skill. <laughs> All right. Thank you, high five. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. You. You're very generous. Thank you. Thank you. I'm clear, okay. That guy was so nice. Yes, I think that's another confirmation of number one rule we learned on the travel is always say yes to invitations. <laughs> The following days, we spent our last moment along the coast. More beach, palm trees and blue seas. Overlanding in this area of Belize is as interesting for the beauty of the seashore than its accessibility and the relaxed vibe of the towns with their colourful, stilt houses that we had seen nowhere else before. But there is more to Belize than the Caribbean Sea. It was our last night along the coast of Belize. Uh, we really love the Caribbean feel of it. You feel it's developing fast but it's still about like the small houses along the ocean and uh, and it remained like very natural like people are so nice they let you park in front of their house to camp on the beach. Uh, yeah there's really a great vibe. So we'll go check inland now. We're going west toward Guatemala. Um, yeah, let's go see what the jungle side of Belize has to offer us. Not too sad to leave the coast? A little bit, but honestly it will be nice to hopefully go up in higher altitudes, sweat a little less, sleep maybe a bit better. But definitely will miss the beach because they're super nice, especially because it's the Caribbean beach and never seen something this nice and clean. Um, but it's okay, we'll come back to it later and we've had beach time for the past two months now. So I think it's, it's okay. What did you like the most about beach in Belize? Mm, being able to park on the sand, feed in the sand, parked on the coconut trees and yeah, just the beauty of the water. Parking under coconut trees is a dangerous activity. We recommend you pay attention to coconuts falling on your car before. <laughs>
about this spot for a bivouac spot? Right in between two rivers, all alone. This is a, not a national park, and this is a national park. We're right in the middle. Perfect. So Nick is showered and in the fight between jungle and beach, I think jungle is defending itself pretty well. When we left today from Hopkins, I was a bit sad thinking that we were like missing some of the best parts in Belize. I mean, or at least cutting short on some of the best parts in Belize. But finding this campsite has really reassured me. Yeah, it's a really, really nice spot. Really nice spot. And the water's super warm. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Maybe the most rewarding part of overlanding in Belize and distinctive to other places was that with the small population of the country, the nature is very well preserved and there are a lot of open areas just ready to be explored. Caves, jungle trails, waterfalls, today's are busy but rewarding. A typical day on the trails in Belize? Hey, follow us! We are just walking in the forest and on a sudden BOOM! Massive cave! And uh, wow, it's really beautiful. Okay, uh, maybe it's not the most impressive animal we'll see today, but together they're capable of doing pretty impressive stuff. We are in front of a highway, a literal highway of ants bringing little pieces of leaves from up there. Here, somewhere. Uh, look, we have it on our off-road mapping system. It's just that nobody is using it. First gear, take it slow, and it goes. <laughs> look at the mapping system here. And so, what we're trying to get to is a thousand-foot waterfall. They call it. So, I think it's the biggest waterfall in Belize, uh, or the second biggest. Um, and we want to go to it using off-road instead of the main road. And uh, it's going. It's going. <laughs> like if we have this part here coming down is okay. We have higher here and here. Bottles over there.
Okay, so now we built a ramp with rocks. Hopefully, Albo will make it. Worst case scenario, we swim in the river, have lunch, and go back. Game plan? Game plan. Slowly, of course, everything coming down this way, right? On the, on the right of this rock. And then I'm going to slowly turn towards the right and try and place my two tires here. One as left as possible and the rest on these rocks that we created. Uh, normally it should go well. Fingers crossed, but no problem. We'll go slowly anyways. Bit of adventure. Let's do it. <laughs> We made it! We made it! Whoa! Cross here. One tire here, the other tire is here. Nalbo is safe. Now we noticed a waterfall. So we're gonna go check it. Now here for sure, there is nobody else except for us. Even a little beach there. Wow. Wanna swim? trails there's signs as if people actually live here <laughs> it says windy pine pacific rights and come on so something's happening somewhere on this trail <laughs> Tonight for dinner, curry, but this time with peanut butter sauce. Okay. So we're gonna try to do a satay. So we did buy the peanut butter. We both don't eat peanut butter, but we're going to try it for a satay. So it's now making the mix between the peanut butter and this uh, pasta curry, curry paste. Everything is here to make a curry with vegetables. So uh, broccoli, onions, and carrots. Mm, it's gonna be so good. Ah, oh, it's awesome to be able to like go to the waterfall uh, just next to the campsite. It means that since we went back on the road, we just didn't have to use our shower any day because we always had a lake or a river to dive in at some point in the day. And today it was 40 degrees, so it was boiling. Yep. Ah. Do you feel fresher? Yeah. Slowly but surely. As we get closer to the border with Guatemala, following those random trails, we make it back to more populated areas. And as always, nice and relaxing vibes. Across this river, on a barge. Here it says uh, 28 minutes Google Maps to get to our destination, but 
if you zoom in, you can just take this barge and in like two, three minutes you're there. We go, I swear. Yeah. Well, at this speed, maybe it's taking 20 minutes to cross the river. <laughs> Belmopan. And Belmopan is here. It's a rather normal sized city in the middle of Belize at the end of the Hummingbird Valley. And yeah, we had no idea. We thought it was Belize city. So that was a pretty efficient and cheap stop in Belmopan. We have found this uh, lake. Uh, we're parked just over there. And apparently in this lake, we've heard there are some mid-sized crocodiles. So we're going to be looking for them. And uh, we bought in uh, the capital of Belize, which is Balmopan, Balmopan uh, three burritos that uh, were looked very nice. So now we're going to be eating them while looking for crocodiles. Are you seeing any? No, at all. So this is the lake. We're guessing they would probably be on this line because here there's a I don't know some sort of roof thing, and then all here looks like there's more people coming to but over there looks wild that's probably going to remain as the one negative point in belize we need to admit that despite spending quite a lot of time in the forest we did not see in any of the wildlife we were hoping to encounter none of the monkeys or tropical birds we were hoping to see but we know somewhere that it might be coming up in the next countries We just spent our last night in Belize, in the fields of a friend of a Defender fan. Um, it was super nice, he has a bar, so we went there yesterday evening and like chit chat with everyone. And then we had a very quiet night on this beautiful ground. Now it's time to wrap up for Belize. Uh, we're going to ask Nick what he thinks about it. So yes, last uh, day in Belize, we're crossing to Guatemala today. We have to say from the outset that Belize was really a highlight of the trip so far. Um, maybe it's also because it's some of the first like jungle we really spent time in, but also the coast part was beautiful. But it's 
probably more because of the vibe and like the relaxed way of people and the just people coming to you very easily to give recommendation, check out on you. This, I mean, we mentioned it already, but there's this Caribbean feel of it. You feel like you're on an island when you're still on the continent. So that was probably my favorite part. For me, I would say the people as well. That's the first thing we notice is uh, they're very generous. When you come into the country, they're always saying, hey guys, yeah, you can park on my land. Hey guys, won't you come this way? Oh, are you lost? Can I help you? Hey, you guys should check out this place. You know, they're really coming forward with tips and ideas or just kind gestures. And they do it freely without having to ask. So that's really nice. And uh, we were told in Guatemala it's even more. So we will see how that is because already here it's really nice. Um, then I like how dense the forests are in Belize. There's so much forest everywhere. A lot of off-road going through them. Um, and it's such a small country, but at the same time such a small population that you just feel like there's so much space uh, and it's not overpopulated. It's really good and it's really interesting. It's a country where you speak English, so it almost feels like you're some, some way in like the American Caribbeans. But uh, yeah, overall Belize has been really cool. We really liked it and we only spent a week, exactly a week, and off we go. Yeah, top for overlanding and also something that struck us, but we'll see in other countries, is how clean it was. Mm. Like, really people make effort to pick up garbage and it's not the case everywhere, so that's a big, big plus. So Belize is for us overlanding approved. It's a small country, it's it's really perfect for, I think, a, a over overlanding trip of any sort. volcanoes, um, cave jungle, all of the things we like and we're looking forward to discovering it. Let's go! So to the question, is Belize really different from its neighbors? For us the answer is yes, it is. And we fell for the Caribbean vibe in this unbelievable country. Next week we go to Guatemala. The world tour continues. You can travel with us by subscribing to the channel. In the meantime, take care. See you next week! Oh, there's a dude sleeping in it. And that is called the Belize Siesta. Yeah. <laughs>